Good cold morning to everybody. It's old soldier coming at you today from Robinson County, North Carolina, where it is a frosty, frigid 28 degrees. Uh, and yes, I'm feeling every bit of the cold this morning. Bones are aching, muscles are hurting, all nine yards with the weather changing. Um, it's just the nature of the beast this winter. Folks, I hope everybody had a good evening last night. Um, touched on a few things in yesterday's video about how our state governments, our local governments, in collusion with the Communist Socialist Party of America, are trying to completely control our lives. More to follow on that in a minute, but before we kind of get into that, I just want to take a moment to pause and reflect, pay homage to a great American, Brigadier General, retired United States Air Force Chuck Yeager. He's gone on to bluer skies. God rest your soul, sir. 97 years old. First man to break the sound barrier. American fighter pilot and test pilot. The men were truly made tough. See, most people don't know when Chuck Yeager made that record-breaking flight of breaking the sound barrier. He did so with cracked ribs. What you have to understand the amount of gravity that's applied to your body in that type of speed it puts tremendous pressure on the human body. Now can you imagine doing that with broken or cracked ribs? He was a man not afraid to push the envelope. The hell of an American. I kind of want to continue today on what we talked about yesterday about these mandates. See, something came to mind yesterday after I did my video. Walked into a store here in North Carolina and stated, state law requires everyone to wear face masks when entering the premises. No, state law does not. The legislature not passed any such laws. Therefore, it cannot be a state law. It's an executive order. But you see how they're trying to word these things now. Twisting executive orders with law. You see, the executive power of every state does not have the ability nor power to enact laws of their own accord. That is why we have state legislatures, state houses, and state senates. Just as we do with the federal system. Yes, the president can sign an executive order. Uncontested is policy. Yes, policy. Policy does not equal law. Law does not equal policy. And this, my friends, is what we have to fight against. 
what we need to push back against, what we must demand stop. Between the mainstream media and the deep state communist socialist party, the fraud and the charade of many in the medical community. We have allowed a virus to basically impact how we live our daily lives for almost a year now. State governments are doing everything within their powers, many that are under the communist socialist leadership to ruin small businesses. You see, they allow people to go to the conglomerates, Walmart, Costco, Sam's Club, BJ's, the Food Lines, the Winn-Dixie's, the Kroger's, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yet you and I are told that we cannot go to a house of worship if over so many people are in attendance. Because we might spread the disease. We might further the pandemic. I argue with you boys and girls, what pandemic? No, I believe this virus is very real and for some very serious. I honestly think our overseas intelligence resources should be put to good measure and dig into how it got created, who funded it. Let's find those, you know what, neutralize them even if they are own countrymen who allowed it to happen. There's a good bit of evidence that Mr. Dr. Fauci had a lot to do with funding the clinic that supposedly let this thing loose. why he's allowed to, to have been allowed to stay on the stage for so long with this, it's beyond me. Something don't pass the scratch and sniff test. On a political front, you have two major pharmaceutical com companies waiting for Joe Biden to be sworn in as president before they're fully going to implement their vaccine. Or so it seems. Even though a lot of the money, time, and research and effort has been done under the current presidential administration. We all know how that goes. No politicians have no freaking honor. They care not to give credit where credit's due, especially when it's their opposition. But back to the, the greater point of the, the morals here. The CSPA encouraged everybody vote by mail-in. 
many of their party did many times from the graveyard to say the same person voting across multiple jurisdictions more than likely they want to shut down all the small businesses you cannot have your restaurant open because it'll spread the virus. Schools need to be closed because the children are in danger and can spread the virus. But yet you can go to Walmart, Costco's, Food Line, the convenience store. Shoot, you can even go to certain clubs. Yet you cannot attend the house of worship. You can't go to the gymnasium. You cannot go to the public library. Factories are at reduced manning in order to curtail the spread of the virus. The winter is setting in and all of a sudden there's a spike in the coronavirus. My question is how many of those are truly positive cases or cases being reported in reality or say the common cold possibly even the flu bug. In New York, you have business owners being arrested for what they're told is a violation of law by opening. But again, is it law or is it an executive order from an executive branch? You see, the governor and the mayor of New York and New York City, respectively, are hypocrites, one, and two, running as dictatorial leaders. Much can be said the same about California and Los Angeles. Californians are starting to say, hey, we've had enough. We need to stand and fight together. We need to stand as a united front and tell our leaders we're not going to take it no more. We will not tolerate a dictatorial, tyrannical government. We do not wish for cradle-to-the-grave legislation. A handful of elected buffoons does not know what's best for me, nor my family, nor yours. We need to let them know we mean business. Saturday before last, I walked into a store here in North Carolina, and I think I told you about this. They make these laminated maps of Fort Bragg. My son-in-law's unit. is worthless. They didn't provide him anything for what he needs in the leadership school that they were sending him to. Me being the old squared away soldier I am, knew where to go get the things he needed. Make him a better leader someday when he gets to be in charge. But I walked into the business to go purchase these maps. And I was told by the proprietor, sir, you have to have a mask on to be in here. And I reminded him of the governor's executive order that exempted me due to medical conditions did not have to share those medical conditions with him or anyone else. His words to me was, go for it. And as we got to talking, his fear was this. Not that I wasn't wearing a mask. 
but that the state, if he was reported for letting me to be in there with a mask, without a mask, that the state could fine him $500 for every incident. And as I talked about yesterday, that is an extortion from the executive power to the small business owners. But only if your friends and neighbors report you. That is what the Communist Socialist Party wants. They want you to tattle on your friends and your neighbors and anybody else you see violating the party plan, not law, the plan. As I've said time and again, if you feel you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you don't, don't. me, what's the worst thing to do? Pin my dog tags and stamp my meal card, no dessert? I'm also a point in time of my age that a life sentence in prison don't mean much. But I refuse to live in fear any longer. As a Christian, if I contract the virus and die, then that was part of God's plan to call me home. So right now, as I'm driving to work, I can be just as easily hit by a car head on, rear ended by a semi, or T boned by some kid not paying attention. I can walk into the store and be shot by a robber, a thief, a thug. I could have a heart attack right now. The bottom line is, we're all going to leave this world at some point in time. No, I, again, I'm not taking this virus lightly. But the same token, I'll not fear it either. And nor should you, my friends. Nor should you. Some might disagree with my stance on, on it, and I, I get it. But that is your choice, and that's the other part of it. Choice. We all have a right to choose how we live. We won't have a choice as to how we die. We can choose how to live. Let what I've said today sink in, folks. Spread the word. Now is the time to fight back before it's too late. Now is the time to push back at the tyrants that are trying to usurp our constitutional republic and abolish it. Now is the time. Until tomorrow, God bless. Take care. Civil soldier out.